This talk is about Yenus and Granite, which is the ongoing effort within a Consensus Lab to bring fast finality to, to Falcon. It's a progress report and was recorded on July 17, 2023. Uh, so this is the outline of the talk. Uh, I'm going to start with a brief overview of expected consensus and discuss its uh, limitations. Uh, then we'll talk about the architectural options that we consider to, consider to bring fast finality to Filecoin. Uh, we'll then introduce the notion of delta consistency, which is a, um, a way to solve the dichotomy between availability and consistency in Filecoin. Uh, then we'll introduce Yenos and Granite, which is our actual architecture to bring fast finality uh, to Falcon. We'll also discuss other work within this project, particularly Protosim, which is a simulator for distributed systems in which we have a model of the Falcon network. Uh, mention the TLA specs that we have for the algorithms considered here. And we'll finish this by discussing next steps in the project. So expected consensus is uh, the algorithm mechanism that Falcon uses to you know, achieve consensus or reach agreement on blocks uh, within the Falcon network. Um, it is a mechanism, so the, the algorithm is divided in time slots of called epochs, of which have a duration of 30 seconds each. And in each epoch, um, a set of blocks is proposed by around five on average uh, self-nominated proposers and these build on top of each other as time uh, or as the epochs pass, pass by um, so there are a few limitations with this mechanism uh, the first is that it's only secure against a roughly 20 percent adversary and that is under strong synchrony assumptions uh, so it the way this works, or in which the analysis was made, is that there's a value with tau, such that after tau epochs, a transaction that appears in an honest nodes chain is guaranteed to appear in the chain of every honest node um, with high probability. Um, so under formal analysis, this is a relatively small value. It's a single digit value for, for tau with high probability. But like I said, this only holds under str strong synchrony assumptions, which are very hard to guarantee on the internet. Um, this means that you know consistency and the safety of the protocol is completely dependent on strong synchrony. Um, so when the synchrony assumptions do not hold, the chains of different nodes can deviate arbitrarily. So as a result of this, the value of tau is actually set to a conservative value in mainnet, in Falcon mainnet. Uh, currently, this is set to be 900 epochs, which corresponds to finality time of seven and a half hours. Um, this happens because the protocol at no point uses information for a quorum of nodes who really need to let the law, uh, to let the chain build over a very long number of epochs uh, to have some notion of security here. This also makes the protocol extremely vulnerable against isolating attacks, for instance, Eclipse attacks in peer-to-peer -peer network or other instantiations of these attack other than Eclipse attacks, and it makes high-value targets particularly susceptible due to their inherent economic incentives. You know, for instance, you can think of an exchange or a bridge. You know, these nodes will be particularly high-value targets to Tech and try to isolate them from the rest of the network. In this way, an adversary can build, uh, can force these nodes to build an arbitrary chain. Uh, and the business impact is this: is that it results in poor user experience. You know, you need to wait a long time for your transactions to be confirmed. Uh, if using bridges or exchanges it takes a very long time for you to be able to trade. Uh, your money, your, your tokens, and limits the scope of uh, FEM applications. Uh, now discuss the architectural options that we considered within this project to bring fast finality to Falcon consensus. So as you can see here, we identified four options to achieve our goal of fast finality. So the first option uh, was to replace expected consensus with the new longest chain protocol. So expected consensus is a longest chain style consensus protocol. Uh, and we considered 
maybe we can design something that gives better guarantees uh, than expected consensus within the same style of protocol. Um, this is, has a few drawbacks, as you can see here. I mean, the time to finality uh, is not guaranteed that would be fundamentally better than the one provided by expected consensus, uh, unless we, or in the situations where we really avoid communication with a quorum of nodes, uh, we're going to always have to wait a very long time until we obtain uh, you know, some guarantees on finality here. Um, and also there's this problem of these protocols typically depending on strong consistency, which is, you know, in a way at odds with what you actually observe uh, on the internet. Uh, the other problem here was that this would involve designing a completely new protocol, which would, you know, take extra time uh, until we see fast finality in, in mainnet. The second options that we considered was to replace expected consensus with the BFT style protocol. So BFT style protocol in this sense, we mean, you know, like classic consensus protocol that provides the typical properties of validity, agreement, and termination. Uh, and when such an instance of such a protocol terminates, guarantee guarantees you immediate finality. Uh, there's no as long as the assumptions hold in terms of the number of nodes that you tolerate to be Byzantine in the network, there's no coming back. What you decide is final here. So the main advantage here is that whatever you propose, uh, sorry, whatever you decide uh, is going to be final. Uh, and typically a protocol like this, as long as more than two thirds of the nodes are available, um, is going to finish very quickly. Typically less than in a second if a protocol is designed uh, correctly. Um, the problem, the only issue with this approach is that uh, it does not guarantee you availability. So the progress of the chain, new blocks being added to the chain when more than a third of the nodes is unavailable for some reason. Uh, and this might not be entirely desirable. There might be situations in which we want the chain to make progress, even if the blocks are not final. Okay, and this not gives you that. Uh, the third option would be to maintain uh, expected consensus in Filecoin, but augment the consensus architecture with the BFT style protocol. This would allow us to obtain the best of both worlds in terms of availability and consistency would have expected consensus protocol, which would give uh, give us availability, even if you know a third of nodes is temporarily unavailable. Uh, but when uh, two thirds of nodes become available, then we will obtain uh, very fast finality in the network. Uh, finally, the last option would be to Similar to the option three, but instead of maintaining expected consensus, we would design uh, a new longest chain style protocol to go with it, to go with the BFT protocol. Uh, so we immediately, very quickly, uh, discarded option one simply because it didn't make sense to replace CC with a protocol that will, would give you essentially the same properties. We wanted fast finality. Uh, I also discarded option four, mostly because it didn't make much sense again to put the design of a new longest longest chain style consensus protocol in the critical path of uh, reaching or getting fast finality in Filecoin. Uh, this left us with two main options, option two and option three, which is to either to replace EC with the new BFT style protocol or augment it with the BFT style protocol. So the two options on the table represent uh, extreme ends of the spectrum uh, between availability and consistency. Uh, on one hand, the option of having uh, a longest chain style protocol and a BFT style protocol to finalize the blocks gives you availability because the longest chain style protocol like you see always guarantees availability regardless of the number of nodes there are actual actually participating in the in the in the network uh, 
but that availability comes at the price of having this unbounded consistency in the system in which that the chain can grow over time and become arbitrarily consistent because you know when we, this is when when the synchronous assumptions do not hold uh, and because we cannot guarantee when the, the synchronous assumptions actually hold this means that the inconsistency in the chain can grow as long as this asynchrony lasts in the network um, then the other option uh, like with the BFT only protocol uh, replacing expected consensus we'd have the opposite we'd have consistency in the sense that whatever you decide is final uh, there can be no forks in the network but this comes at the price of having potentially periods of inavailability in the network particularly when uh, more than one third of the nodes is unavailable for some reason in, it, in which case the growth would stall so it seems like we're forced into this dichotomy between availability and consistency uh, provided by these two options um, and why would we want availability without consistency uh, or put in another way liveness without safety um, so you might be asking why can't we just have a BFT style protocol and whatever we decide is final? So the problem here is that we have we might have situations where the network will not make progress uh, during transient failures, for instance. You can think of network partitions in which you can argue that they do not happen or are, or are rare in the internet, but there might be situations in which they might actually happen either due let's say some political situations in which a country, entire country is cut off from the rest of the internet. And that country has a significant number of nodes in the Falcon network. Or uh, you can think of, for instance, common mode, mode failures, for instance, uh, a bug into the software of into the Falcon client that is used by a significant number of nodes that brings those no nodes down temporarily. Um, these situations might all cause the network to completely stall if we have only a BFT only style protocol uh, in the in Falcon mainnet. So the question here is also how far do we want to take it? You know, like uh, if we have availability, unbounded availability also means unbounded consistency. But this is not a good thing, right? Um, if we let the chain grow. Uh, or let it be completely available, it means it might, it might be also completely inconsistent over time if the synchrony assumptions do not hold. Uh, so we're faced with this dichotomy of we either choose availability over consistency or we choose consistency over availability. Um, so to solve this dichotomy, we introduced this notion of delta consistency, which tries to allow you to pick, uh, you know, whatever point within the spectrum that serves you the best. So, and the way this works is that um, we introduce this system perimeter called delta, and we say that an, an unfinalized chain suffix cannot extend from the last finalized block more than delta blocks. This means that, <laughs> put it in another way, we can say that uh, once a block is finalized, uh, you cannot have in the network or in the chain more than delta unfinalized blocks after that last finalized block. So we kind of allow the network to grow or the chain to grow, uh, potentially inconsistency, inconsistently, but no more than delta blocks from the last finalized block. If that happens, then the network stalls and something must be done to resolve the problem that's causing uh, the lack of availability in the network. So this is Delta is an adjustable system perimeter. Um, and you can see, depending on how we set, we can actually get uh, the opposite ends of the spectrum as well. When you have Delta equals one, this is similar to a BFT only architecture. When you have Delta equals to infinite, infinity, this is similar to the longest chain plus BFT architecture. So this is an example of how it works. Uh, let's say we have Delta equals two and we have a finalized lock on epoch E. This means we can have up to two more epochs in which the blocks are not finalized. We can keep adding those blocks to the network. Uh, the unfinalized blocks, they sh need to have a backlink to the last finalized lock. This is so we, we know which version of the power table these blocks are using. 
uh, in their messages. Uh, and then let's say now that uh, the BFT style protocol runs and finalizes the block in epoch E plus two. This means we can add two more blocks on top of it up until epoch E plus four until we need to finalize more blocks. So we're now going to discuss the actual architecture that implements these ideas. It's called YANOS and Granite is the actual consensus algorithm or BFT style consensus algorithm that we'll use to implement this architecture. So this is how uh, Falcon consensus, the mechanism works very succinctly uh, nowadays. We have this um, system component called the sinker and the code is actually called the sinker. And as this component receives blocks from the network, it appends those blocks to the chain. The chain is actually not a chain; it's actually more more a tree, more more of a tree because you can have um, forks in it. But let's ignore that detail for now. So let's assume we have we now have this chain. Starts with the genesis block, then we have another block, and we have the H block, which constitutes the head of the chain or the canonical head of, head of the chain. Um, we then introduce. Uh, new component called Granite Consensus. This is the BFT style consensus algorithm that we're going to use. For now, let's just think of it as a black box, okay? Uh, so Granite is, you know, is um, something that represents uh, something that is in yielding, is firm, is definitive. And this is why we call it Granite, uh, to signal that whatever blocks output that output by that uh, algorithm, they're final, they do not change. Um, this consensus algorithm, uh, we're not, I'm not going to describe it here in detail because we don't have time for that, but it's a, I mean, it's a Byzantine uh, fault-tolerant multivalued consensus algorithm. Uh, described in the notes in the link in this presentation, if you want to learn more about it, um, but it's not, Important to clarify that it's not an uh, algorithm designed from scratch. It's based on a very classic uh, algorithm from the scientific literature introduced initially in 1987. Uh, this algorithm is a originally binary consensus algorithm uh, that used randomization to circumvent the FLP impossibility result. Uh, and we change it judiciously to be a multi-valid consensus algorithm. That means instead of deciding on a binary value 0, 1, it can decide on on a value coming from an arbitrary domain. In this case, you know, the domain will be all the blocks uh, potentially proposed in the network. Um, has optimal resilience, which it can tolerate up to just less than a third of Byzantine nodes. Uh, we're going to design it and implement it in a way that is scalable. Uh, we're aiming at of the algorithm having a communication complexity of log n per process uh, using committees, you know, these are algorithm style committees, uh, or bn squared if we use full participation. But in each case, we'll use clever engineering solutions that gossip, that leverage gossip and aggregation to implement it efficiently. And the idea here is that we first we intend on taking full participation to its practical limit whatever the number of nodes might be involved in that, and then resort to large committees uh, when the system size just becomes too large. So the algorithm assumes a strong adversary. There are no shortcuts here in terms of the modeling. Uh, the adversary can adaptively corrupt up to F processes and has full control of the scheduling of the messages in the network. Uh, it's resistant to denial of service attacks because um, so, because one e either uses full participation, which all the nodes participate, or if it uses committees, those committees are secret and the processes involved in that particular step of the algorithm are not revealed until they actually take that step. Um, there are no designated leaders in the algorithm. This also makes it particularly resistant to denial of service. So it's a leaderless uh, algorithm doesn't need any trusted setup, you know, except for the nodes knowing the public keys of the other nodes. And it's fast. Uh, it can terminate in two to three message delays in most cases. 
And these will very likely lead to most of the time or the vast majority of the time as reaching finality within the same epoch in which a block is proposed. So instead of having to wait seven and a half hours for finality, we can likely have finality within less than 30 seconds. This is a pseudocode of a synchronous version of the algorithm. I'm not going to describe here, it's just for illustrative purposes. Um, and then the other piece of this architecture is Janos, as you can see here. And this is, is the component that is going to coordinate uh, or bridge the, the expected consensus with granite consensus to reach fast finality. So Janos, why Janos? You know, like in Roman mythology, was the god of doors, gates, transitions, and represents the middle ground between things, you know, uh, life, death, uh, beginning, end, uh, instability, firmness, or availability and consistency. Uh, and the way it works is actually very simple, uh, should lead to a very simple implementation. So Yanos runs in a loop, and that loop first, what it does is reads the head or the canonical head of the chain, and then whatever that head is in the in the in the node, it proposes that that head as the input to an instance of granite consensus. Granite uh, here, let's read it as a black box. Black box will eventually output some block that is considered to be final. It doesn't have to necessarily be the same block that the node proposes. It can be any block. Um, as long as that block was proposed by some process and exists in the chain. Uh, and then Yanos takes that and marks that block as being final in the chain. So this is it, this is how it works, pretty simple. Um, so there are a few open design questions in this work. Uh, one I already alluded to is whether to use full participation of or fixed size committees. I also already alluded to the, so the approach that we'll be taking here, which will be, you know, we want to take full participation to its limit and then resort to committees uh, when we actually reach at the limit. Uh, the other is the dependency on DRAND. Uh, we intend to on keeping it from now for now, uh, particularly to use DRAND to signal the start of an epoch and to get the global randomness needed. Uh, but this can be changed in the future. So we'll keep an open door for this. Um, the other option is whether we, you, we keep tip sets or move to just using blocks in the system. Um, we'll address, I'll talk about this later in a few slides. Uh, so let's uh, table our discussion for now. The other is how to handle membership or the power table here. Um, the approach will be, since we'll use delta consistency, is for any changes in the power table to come into effect after a delta number of, uh, of blocks or, being, or epochs passing after the last finalized block. And then there's block time, which we're not going to change. It's important to, to clarify this. It's out of scope for this project. However, this effort lays important groundwork for future decreases in block time. So other work related to this project is these two lines. We have uh, ProtoSim, which is a simulator for distributed algorithms that we've been using and going to use more to test some of the ideas presented here. The currently includes a model of the Falcon network uh, with the geographical, uh, correct geographical distribution of the nodes uh, and the latency associated with that ge geographical distribution. We've also been writing TLA plus specifications of the algorithm or algorithms in the research because we have a few variants of granite that we're considering. Um, so this gives us an additional um, confidence in the correctness of these algorithms. So finally, the next steps in the project. Uh, so we want to identify and start quickly iterating on what we consider to be the shortest past path to fast finality. Uh, and you already identified a few of the options we need to take to, to get to, to that fast path or shortest path. Uh, main question has related with committees. So I said before that ideally we want to take, um, full participation to its practical limit. 
However, for that to happen, uh, we'll require uh, significant research and engineering work to be able for the system to scale with full participation of thousands of nodes. So for now, in the first iteration, we're leaning towards using committees. And you already have in the code, at least in the Lotus code, um, you know, um, logic that can be reused for this. Uh, and then later, we can then uh, design and implement uh, ways to improve the scalability of the system with full participation. Uh, like I mentioned, for DRAND, we intend to keep on keeping it for now. Block time, we intend to keep it for now. We're going to use delta consistency as the model uh, to tie these together or the, to solve the dichotomy between availability and consistency. Uh, the main open question is whether to keep tip sets for now or to remove them now. Uh, I think the consensus here is to that eventually we want to get rid of tip sets and only work with blocks. Uh, it's not clear though whether we should have that in the critical path of fast finality or address the issue of tip sets later. And that's it. Thank you.